Hi, I'm Nate Bronner with the Virginia Cooperative Extension and the Master Gardeners of Virginia. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about this transition into April and what we should be doing in our garden right now. What to look for in your garden and some things that you might want to be thinking about. Now normally we do these talks in libraries or in small groups where I come to you and we talk about intensive gardening or seed starting techniques. But that's not possible this year. And with the number of questions that we've been getting, we wanted to put together a video like this to help reach out and answer some of those questions, give you some things to think about and projects that you can do at home, even with the social distancing that we're all practicing right now. Right now I'm standing in front of my um, raised bed garden that I use for planting my winter vegetables. Now, I use raised beds quite a bit because it makes it, uh, it cuts down on the amount of work that I need to do in my garden quite a bit. I can plan it out a lot better than I can with rows. I can control the soil in it. But this is not going to be a talk about just intensive gardening. That's another uh, subject for another time. If you can see the, though here, when I lay out my bed, I use some pl plumber's, uh, plumber's string to do that. You can buy that in any home improvement store. It comes in a roll like this. And I also use a staple gun. And I measure off my raised bed into one foot increments. And then I make a grid across it, sectioning off one foot squares all over the garden. This technique is called intensive gardening, although others like Mel Bartholomew in his book, Square Foot Gardening, have called it square foot gardening, and that works too. So those terms are kind of interchangeable um, for this technique. But the idea is that you wanna have a grid here with squares that are one foot each that you can then use to organize your garden. Once I've organized it that way, I look at how close I should be planting each uh, plant to each other. Now, normally that spacing is on the back of the packet of seeds. And it might tell you six inch spacing for say lettuce, which I have over here. If I know that I have six inch spacing between the individual plants, and I know it's 12 inches in each square, I divide that 12 by six, and I know I'm gonna have a grid of two by two, which means four plants in that square. Spinach is a little bit closer together. The spacing for that is about four inches. 12 divided by four comes out to a three. So I know I can plant them in a grid of three by three. Or carrots and radishes, which I've recently planted and have not yet come up, only need about three inches spacing between them. 12 divided by three is four. So I can have a grid of four by four down here and those will all be uh, popping up. Radishes, by the way, are one of the first uh, plants that after you plant them, you'll be able to harvest them. They usually have a harvest time of three to four weeks. So they're really quick. If you want to get something fast, you can plant that. Similarly, most of the plants that you see here in my garden, right here in front of you, are winter plants. Things that you can, uh, plants that you can plant in the cold season and get a harvest even when the temperatures are a little bit lower. Plants like lettuces or spinaches. Plants like sugar snap peas. Plants like radishes and carrots. Things like that grow very well this time of year and you can start them from seed right now in your garden and you'll be fine. One of the other tools that I use in my um, raised bed gardens are these trellises. They make out of some simple half inch conduit. I bend that and I put this nylon netting there and then I allow things like these sugar snap peas to grow up it. That keeps them off of the soil which increases their health by decreasing their susceptibility to disease and pests. It also lets me see any problems that are occurring on them a lot easier, and it makes it very easy for me to harvest, see and harvest the fruit that, uh, that appears on it, or vegetables that appear on it. So it makes it really easy for me, and it provides a little bit more interest in the garden. Make sure that if you're gonna be putting up trellises though, with very few exceptions, that you put up the trellises on the north side of your garden so those plants don't shade out the, uh, the other plants that you have in your garden. I'd like to move over here a little bit now and talk to you about some warmer season vegetables. So follow me over to this bed. Now those of you who have come to some of my um, classes back in February will know that I'm a big believer in starting things from seed. And I start things from seed inside 
and let them grow up until they come out. I usually use these plastic shoe boxes to start up my plants. Now these are some peppers that I started up quite a while ago, uh, back at the beginning of uh, February, and they are all ready to go in the ground. Normally our last frost date in our part of Virginia is between April 5th to April 15th. But looking at the, what, the way the weather's been this year and the forecast for the future, I know that the, that the soil is warmed up enough that it's time that I can start planting these now. So I have mature plants that I have then hardened off. Simply put, that means when I'm growing them under a grow light in my house, they're under one intensity of light. Even if it's a, if, even if it's a shop light that's right over them, that's still not as intense as the sun. So about a week ago, I started hardening these off. That means that I would bring them out for a couple hours at a time to acclimatize to being in the sun and then take them back in the environment that they were used to. Maybe two hours the first day, three the second, maybe starting off with some filtered morning sun and then moving up towards the end of the week that they're they can stand the full afternoon sun and the full intensity of that. If you notice, these are doing so well that some of these even have some blossoms on them, telling me that it's really time to get them into the ground. And I have over here, I have what's called a Mad Hatter pepper. Um, it's a pepper that I like quite a bit. It grows up about eight feet tall. It's incredibly tall. And one of the problems is that as I separate this and I plant in these newspaper pots, some of the roots have really grown together with the other ones. I'm gonna put this down and I'll show you this plant here. I use newspaper pots. They work very well because that newspaper is biodegradable and you can see the, uh, how much the roots have grown out and how healthy this is. Now, this plant is all ready to go into the ground. It, it's, uh, it's, it's quite ready to start growing there. But with peppers, plants like peppers, uh, plants like eggplants, tomatoes, those require 12 inches spacing between plants, sometimes 18, but in this case, 12 inches. I know that that means that I need to, if this bed is all going to be peppers, that means I'm going to be spacing the peppers out once every 12 inches. So rather than using grid lines like I did in my winter garden here, I made holes in this, um, in this film that I put placed over the garden to uh, indicate where I should be planting them. Now this film is not a plastic, it's a biodegradable film that I've laid down over my bed to cut down on the incidence of weeds in my garden and also to help me with uh, with warming up the soil. If you notice, it's a black surface, so it's going to help warm up the soil underneath and help these plants get a better start on their season. Like most gardeners, I like extending my season and getting more growing time. So if I can plant a week earlier because I'm using a film like this, then I'm going to try that out. This is my first year using this, but a number of gardeners that I know who I really respect use this and have good results with it. So I have my first hole right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've already dug that out a little bit. I'm going to take a Cori Cori tool and make this hole a little bit bigger. All of this newspaper is very loose on there. I'm going to plant this down right through the hole there. Get it nice down into there and then I'll pack the soil around it and that plant is good to go. I will also put a stake in here to hold it up so it starts uh, growing with very little stress on it. And that's all it takes. So right now at the start of April in this year, looking at the weather forecast, it's time to start transitioning into the garden. If you're interested and this gets good results, we'll go over some other uh, topics for what you need to consider in your garden uh, later. Now is not the right time to be planting squash or cucumbers. Curcurbits like that need a little bit warmer temperatures. So I'm going to be waiting for another two weeks before I start planting those. But for your tomatoes and peppers, it might be a good time to start that right now. I'm Nate Bronner and this has been From the Garden.